Rachel, and we are talking about what is an open table. And I had never really even heard of open table <laughs> until Pastor Rachel started this. Um, but Pastor Rachel, would you just tell us a little bit about open table, what it is, how it got started? Um, let's just start there. You know, uh, really, um, when I think about why open table and why we got started, I just think about like the scripture and mm -hmm. how Jesus, I noticed that he liked to eat a lot mm -hmm. and he liked to hang out with people who weren't necessarily like him. Mm -hmm. And he did most of that like hanging out and just really teaching people around a table. And so I've always had the sense um, kind of in my personal practices mm -hmm. that I should have an open table. If I'm gonna be a follower of Jesus, that there's something about gathering around mm -hmm. a table and eating with people who are maybe a little different than you. And each time we move into a new community, we're kind of new to Tip City, we've only been here a couple of years, uh, we have to figure out a way to immerse ourselves mm -hmm. in our neighborhood, in our community. And so we kind of paired those two concepts together. Um, it was kind of one February, yeah. we were having spring fever, fever. Mm -hmm. you know, it was like snow after snow after snow after snow. And we thought to ourselves, hey, we should invite our neighbors over. And then Pastor Mike talked about doing that for Holy Thursday. And we thought to ourselves, we don't wanna make it awkward mm -hmm. on Holy Thursday. Let's start doing it before that. And so we just started um, inviting our neighbors over, putting out a menu, um, seeing who would show up. Mm -hmm. And the first time we had like 20 people and it was amazing, wow. you know, like these 20 folks showed up. and. Um, and then we started to do it week after week mm -hmm. after week. Now we do it every other week and we have between 30 and 50 people yeah. um, from the church, from our neighborhood, um, who, from people we, um, maybe we work with. Uh, we just have an open invitation. In fact, we have a Facebook page mm -hmm. and about 180 people wow. on that list. Wow. And thank God not everybody yeah. shows up every week, but um, it's just a great opportunity for us to really get to know our neighbors. And what we've discovered in it is that it's really become a front door for us um, to invite people to faith. You know, we mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the expectations that when people come to Open Table, they gotta come to Ginghamsburg Church. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fantastic if that yeah. happens, and it's happened. But um, really for us, it's about opening our home, opening our lives, opening ourselves giving people a safe space to be themselves mm -hmm. and helping them understand that church people, even pastors, are real people too. And creating this like atmosphere of love and hospitality so that people can get to know Jesus really mm -hmm. in a very non-threatening way. No yeah. expectations. So So like t practically you're not <clears throat> you're not cracking a Bible. You're nope. just hanging out, <laughs> you're eating supper, there's no uh, plan. There's no agenda. No. The <laughs> only thing that we do um, is we pray mm -hmm. at the beginning. And sometimes people bring their concerns. I mean, our neighbors have real life concerns. Some are experiencing, you know, whether it's a trauma with cancer or, you know, a knee that needs replaced mm -hmm. or whatever. And so we take those moments to pray over our neighbors, to pray over our friends, to pray over people who come. And so there's this, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. like holy moment that's yeah. created in that. The other thing that's been shocking and surprising is not everybody's the same, right? Mm -hmm. People are very different. They come from very different backgrounds, politically, religiously. They have very different understandings of practices. And yet, um, what's amazing about Open Table is that um, it's a great space to help people learn from people who are very different than themselves. So I love that yeah. part. Sometimes it makes me anxious mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, sweet Jesus, what's going to happen in this mm -hmm. moment? But, but in reality, I realize just how holy that is because so often we're with people who are exactly mm -hmm. like us. And here, it kind of disrupts us in a holy way to be with people who aren't. So, Man, I think that's awesome. I think it could be just a great way just to open your home, put something on the calendar, invite your, your friends and your family, and uh, you don't need an agenda. And I think you know that could be a precursor to a life group, or that could be how you choose to have a life group, you know, with no plan or agenda. So thank you for sharing that. Awesome. I have one more thing to say, but <laughs> I don't know. What, go for it. Okay. So um, 
So the great thing about, we've had open table for about a year and a half. Uh And now out of that open table, we've now formed a life group because we do have some people that want to go deeper in the word, that want to learn more about God. And so um, many of the core folk who are part of our life group are... Yes, who are part of our life group came from Open Table. That's awesome. So it's an amazing, like, just how God is using that um, in our lives and in the lives of others to take us deeper. And so, what are you guys going to use for Alpha? <laughs> yeah. So if you have a yeah. group of people that are new to the faith, um, check out Alpha um, AlphaUSA.org, and it's something we have access to for free um, through the church, and we'd love to help you get started with that. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you want for our life groups? Anything else you would want our life groups to know? Or be helpful for them to know? Or? Um, you know, yeah, let's talk about one thing yeah. that I think is important that is really always is really on my heart um, to talk about. You know, I think um, life groups get scary when they get messy. Mm-hmm. And, and life groups can get... Um, a little off track when people get messy. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I think as human beings, when it gets hard and we get messy, the first thing that we want to do is quit. Mm-hmm. We see that in marriages. We see that in friendships. We see that all over the place. But I really feel like um, that's where real deep spiritual work can happen, mm-hmm. is when we don't quit, when we have the hard conversations, when we say the uncomfortable things, when we confront some of the deepest issues that we have. Now, it takes Mm -hmm. a while to get there, Mm -hmm. um, to pretend that life groups are gonna be there, you know, without years of being in relationship with one another is a joke. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that what maybe sour some people's experience of life groups is that, you know, couple so-and-so is struggling and so we kind of avoid that Mm -hmm. subject because we don't know what to do and we're friends with both of them and instead of just saying, hey, what's really going on? Mm-hmm. And, you know, talking with those people individually and working, doing that extra hard work, not that you're going to fix a relationship, but to make sure that we're, we're asking the tough questions, we're having the hard conversations. I know some of my most... Um, do, we need to, do we need to restart? Is that good? Yeah. That's good? Okay, go ahead. Some of my yeah. deepest, like probably darkest issues are in relationships in the sense that You know, like I just get annoyed with people really easily or even like if people aren't on my agenda and I have a fast paced Mm -hmm. life agenda that I just don't even understand how they couldn't be um, as driven as I am. And and what God has been working in my life is recognizing like every human being has a different set of gifts and not just a different set of gifts, but a different set of interacting and um Communication mm-hmm. is so important um, to getting through those problematic times, those hard times in life group. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you get through some of those bumps, you go to a deeper level that you never imagined you could ever be at in terms of human relationship. Um, it's just not you know, throwing your mm-hmm. hands up and saying we're done every time it gets mm-hmm. hard um, being in a relationship with human beings. because. I think our relationships are not just about us and Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're about us and Jesus and the people we do life with. And so um, if we think we can just fix it by saying, well, I'm going to do my own prayer and my own Bible study and forget this life group, um, Mm -hmm. we've missed half of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we've missed half of Jesus' message. So I think it's really important for us to work through the hard stuff too. Mm -hmm. So. That's good. Mm-hmm. I think it even comes down to like a dominant person who's maybe monopolizing the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Like I think sometimes the most loving thing we can do is just to be honest with, maybe maybe it doesn't need to happen in the group, maybe we can pull them aside, but um, you know, some of the most loving things that can happen, I think, are when we're honest about, hey, maybe, you know, it's, it, it's maybe disrespectful when you're, you're oversharing this much or taking this much time and we want to value every person's time and opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I'd appreciate it if you would, um, I don't know how, you know, maybe it's, it's just a, an ask or an invitation to, to allow others to speak more. Um, and that can be one of those hard issues that we'd rather just skirt or rather just maybe not get back together because we don't want to address the issue. But when we dive into the issue, um, it may bring healing mm-hmm. to that person. 
um, and, and help their future relationships. When you say that, it reminds me that we Christians like to be nice, but we're not called to be nice. We're called to be loving. And love, being loving and being nice are two different things. Mm. You know, and so um, I think that's where communication is really key. That I know we come into relationship with a lot of communication baggage or passive aggressive behavior or whatever. But when we learn to work through our issues, when we learn to work through moments of conflict, um, it not only helps us, you know, in our life group, it helps us in our marriage relationships, it helps us with our children, it helps us in our jobs, our careers, it helps us with our friendships outside of that life group. Um, life group should be a place in which God is growing us and shaping us, um, if we will let it. Uh, and that's key. We've got to be willing to let, um, let God kind of hone us in that very safe space. That's good. Good. Thank you. All right. Do you need anything to set that up? <laughs> like how we just, she just started rolling. Yeah, I just That's awesome. <laughs>